hearing conversations about textbook publishers in California and the importance of diversifying what are in the books that our California students see. Um, I want to thank um, all the legislators who are here, um, my co-chair, Senator Limon, who will be making a few remarks. Um, uh, look, it is proven that when students see uh, images that look like them or content about their experience, they do better um, academically and socially. We have a wonderfully diverse student body in California, and many of our textbooks haven't kept up with that diversity. Uh, this is a chance to diversify those narratives. Um, this is all happening against the backdrop of what's happening in other countries uh, where you have governors in other states literally trying to strip out any um, uh, representation about race, uh, about the experience of LGBTQ plus students, students with disabilities. California is going in the other direction. Um, we are uh, today asking textbook publishers to make a firm commitment to diversify their books and to share what it is that they're doing. Uh, we're a state that provides uh, ethnic studies as a graduation requirement. Uh, we know that all students do better when they have the chance to learn about the contributions of people of color um, in our schools. Uh, we are a state that provides resources to support LGBTQ plus students um, uh, to have great outcomes academically and socially um, and to avoid them being bullied. And so um, we're grateful that you all are carrying the message uh, to our constituents of the important work being done here uh, today. I'd like to invite up uh, to have a few remarks. Uh, the co-chair uh, of this task force, uh, someone who's no stranger uh, to this work, has done so much uh, along the lines of bilingual education and supporting uh, Native American communities and students in general. Uh, please welcome Senator Monique Limon from District 19. Thank you. Thank you so much to our California State Superintendent Tony Thurman and thank you to my colleagues um, from the legislature who are here. As someone who's been uh, an educator prior to getting to the California legislature, I know what it's like to be in a classroom in both higher ed and K through 12. And I know what it's like for students to see, to read, to interpret, and to have dialogue about the material and literature that they read. And I know how important it is for them to see their lived experiences reflected in a variety of ways through literature. When I first got to the legislature, I worked um, on an issue that was an issue that was very important to me. I realized that I grew up in the Santa Barbara area. I went to public schools, and this, these, were, these were lands of the Shumash people, native people. And I knew about the Shumash, but it was really third person. And I realized that it wasn't in our books, in our curriculum. And when I was an adult um, and I was on the school board, I was handed a beautiful, uh, what we then knew of encyclopedia. I don't know that everyone knows what an encyclopedia is now, but an encyclopedia with terms, language, and history of the Shumash people along the Central Coast. And it was then that I realized I am an adult and never once did I see this, did I learn this, or have access to material, to literature, to content that was reflective of the native people of the place that I was born and raised and that I grew up in. And it is with that background and that experience, um, and at a time where, quite frankly, uh, we were all very accepting, there was no controversy um, about including um, backgrounds in literature that we started the work here in the California State Legislature. I look at my colleagues, I see, I see that, you know, who, who is here and how much they have worked to also expand curriculum um, in our schools. So the conversation today is not simply a reaction to what is happening in our country. It is an, a, a commitment on behalf of the state of California to say what we were doing 10 years ago, 20 years ago, and our efforts to diversify curriculum, to allow and to encourage ethnic studies, to ensure that there is dialogue, that there is critical thinking, is a commitment that we have had 10 years from now ago and that we have today and that we will have in another 10 years. These are the California values and I'm so grateful to all of the publishers that are here, the stakeholders that are here to also help us ensure that the values of California in, in, in allowing and promoting and securing a diverse 
curriculum for students is something that we're going to do in partnership with our stakeholders. So I want to thank our Superintendent of Public Instruction for convening us, for creating a space to have this conversation, and for ensuring that our educators, our schools, our students and our communities at large know that despite what is happening in the country, despite the books that are being banned, the literary uh, material that is being banned, we are very committed to ensuring that our students in California see themselves reflected, no matter where they come from, what parts of the world, what backgrounds they have, see themselves reflected in the curriculum. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Lamone. Very well said. Um, I want to invite up Assembly Member uh, James Ramos um, to say a few remarks. Uh, no stranger to this work. Thank you for championing great work um, to uh, include representation of Native American people, um, of our students, and um, the first people in our nation. Please welcome uh, Assembly Member James Ramos for a few remarks. Well, thank you, um, State Superintendent of Public Instruction, uh, Tony Thurman, and to the co-chair, uh, Senator Monique Lamont, these issues that are being brought up here today shows the diversity and the need for um, accurate um, history and portrayal within the books that are being um, taught to the students here in the state of California. We introduced a bill 1703 that called on the California Indian Education Act and it's uh, mirrored after Washington State, the time immemorial bill that embeds the curriculum of Washington State's first people in their curriculum and it took them 15 years to get it embedded. And I know that working together with our colleagues that it won't take California uh, 15 years to get that embedded into the state of California, especially with the support of the uh, publishers that are here today. When we talk about the Spanish incursion um, that's taught at the elementary level, then we, we owe it to give a correct portrayal of also the impact on California's first people, the California Indian people in general, about atrocities about the different things that happened during the colonizational period, but also the resiliency of California Indian people to overcome and to be here today. And I stand here um, where representation truly does matter as the first and only um, California Indian ever elected in the state legislature. I'm of Serrano and Cahuilla, and I live on the San Manuel Indian Reservation. So these are things that we grew up learning in school that we knew weren't correct. But yet when we challenged it in the classroom, we were met with sometimes not warm feelings from those within the educational arena. And then you move on to the gold rush era. If we're going to be teaching about the gold rush, then it's a chance to correctly portray what truly happened again to the Californian people, which isn't, isn't a rosy picture, but it's still a picture that needs to be told in the state of California. Because California is home to more than 109 fairly recognized tribes. But even more than that, California, when the first exploration took place, was covered with California Indian people throughout the state. This is one of the few states that still has the ancestral lands tied to the individuals. Chumash people, Serrano, Cahuilla, Yurok, um, Karuk, all those are different cultures, different languages, and different histories that need to be taught within the school system itself. So we have a chance today to be able to lend our voice to publishers and to the state of California that it's time that we come together, work together to ensure that a correct portrayal of California is being taught within the classrooms. And that should include and start with California's first people, the California Indian people. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Ramos. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you, Senator Member Ramos, and for bringing those wonderful remarks on behalf of District 45 in the state of California. I'm looking to members and their staff to let me know when they need to duck out for uh, committee hearings. Um, until then, we'll continue uh, with the order that we have. Next up, Assembly Member uh, Corey Jackson, District 60, who many of you have met, who has um, uh, brought forward legislation that would address some of the issues that are coming forward with book banning. Please welcome Assembly Member Jackson, Dr. Corey Jackson. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Superintendent. It's uh, my honor to be here, and, and thank you for leading. Um, on this critical issue. Uh, we don't just uh, know that uh, knowledge is important. We don't just know that knowledge is power. Um, we are finding out that knowledge is sacred um, in how we um, teach it uh, in our schools and how we consume it as a society. 
Um, and I think that uh, this time in history um, is an important reflection on that if we are not uh, being taught um, our true history, if we are not uh, being taught to have empathy um, and care for the history of the most marginalized and oppressed populations um, in this nation, uh, that our society begins to fall apart. And this is probably uh, the most critical issue uh, that we have to fix here um, in California, uh, because no one would have thought uh, that uh, these dangerous movements uh, is taking a foothold uh, in California, and certainly uh, representing uh, parts of Riverside County uh, where some of the epicenter is um, in this book banning movement, uh, this anti-history um, of people of color and LGBTQ people. Uh, we have to make it clear uh, that this movement has no place here in California, right. uh, that all people will be given the dignity and humanity uh, that the Creator has afforded them. And there is no one who can take that away from anyone. Uh, AB 1078 um, is a critical response uh, to ensuring that we put the brakes on uh, the banning of books. Uh, when you can simply say uh, that a school board can simply say uh, that um, a book is not allowed because um, of this mysterious boogeyman called CRT um, uh, based upon uh, someone's own opinion about what history should be, not what it is, um, is uh, simply very dangerous. And we are learning this more and more. Um, we cannot just hope this goes away. If we think it's going to go away, uh, we are going to be saying to the next generation that we failed in our sacred responsibility of ensuring uh, that these issues are not something that yet you have to face. This cannot happen on our watch. Um, and so I am uh, very honored to be working uh, with the superintendent, uh, working with the chairs of the education committee. I want to thank Assemblymember uh, Murasuchi for uh, keeping uh, this bill alive, uh, to making sure that we had enough time to bring together uh, the diversity of California so that we can have the critical conversations to find a balanced approach. Uh, because we know that this issue is so complicated, uh, so complex, uh, but I believe we will meet the moment. And this is something that we should all be proud of. Um, and so I want to thank uh, those who are here. Um, I want to implore uh, publishers to hold the line of truth hold the line of truth so that we can make sure that future generations are better off than we are today. Thank you. Thank you, you Assemblymember Jackson. Um, I'm so grateful uh, for Assemblymember uh, Rick chavez Subur from the 51st District for many years has been lifting up examples of ways that we support all students, but especially supporting our LGBTQ plus students and because of your leadership, there is much that is in legislation. Uh, please welcome Assemblymember member uh, Zaber. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Superintendent Thurman, uh, for inviting me to participate in the task force and having me here today. You have been a rock solid champion of making sure that our schools are safe and secure for LGBTQ plus and all students, all students that face uh, vulnerable circumstances and are at risk. Um, we are here today to address the challenges faced by students who do not see themselves represented in the lessons taught in our schools and the stories told in our textbooks. These include students from communities of color, youth from immigrant communities, students with disabilities, Native Americans, LGBTQ plus students, and more. And generally these students face lower success rates in our schools. LGBTQ plus students who are targeted because of their sexual orientation or gender identity miss school nearly three times more often, had lower GPAs, 
we're less likely to pursue post-secondary education, we're twice as likely to have been disciplined at school, had lower self-esteem, and had higher levels of depression and suicide ideation than their peers. That number is even greater for LGBTQ plus youth who are also targeted because of their race, immigration status, zip code, religion, or ability. Schools play a crucial role in supporting these students who may lack acceptance at their home and in their communities. With the right programs and adoption of best practices, schools can provide safe and inclusive environments where students can thrive academically, emotionally, and socially, but many schools have a long way to go. School curriculum is a large part of the overall school experience and has the ability to significantly impact students' well-being and sense of belonging. LGBTQ plus inclusive curriculum helps students feel seen, valued, and respected. It also benefits non-LGBTQ students by fostering understanding and empathy and acceptance. Holocaust anti-Semitism curriculum that focuses on contributions of members of communities and, and other uh, curriculum that focuses on contributions from communities of color, ethnic studies, religious minorities, and women are similarly critical. I did not have the opportunity as a child or even as a young man to see representation around me. This is why I fought with Superintendent Thurman for many years to create a better, kinder, more compassionate world for LGBTQ and all students. Whether it was as Executive Director of Equality for California or now as a legislator here in the state of California. In fact, it, during my time at Equality California, we proudly supported the Fair Education Act, which required the updating of social science and history curriculum. I remember our staff reviewing hundreds and hundreds of textbooks. Textbooks from every grade all the way through to make sure that they represented California values and not Texas or Florida values. Right. And now as a legislator, I've authored AB5, the Safe and Supportive Schools Act, it was an act that was actually handed to me by Superintendent Thurman because we worked with him on earlier versions and the, and the legislation that is getting us here while I was at Secretary, when I was at Equality California, and that provides the training that teachers want and need to support LGBTQ and all students. I'm grateful for the support and sponsorship of the superintendent, as well as Equality California, CFT, and the California Teachers Association. These initiatives promote inclusivity, diversity, and accurate representation, contributing to a more acceptive, accepting and inclusive learning environment. However, school boards, in many cases, are failing, ch facing challenges and protests uh, around inclusive curriculum. That is exactly why the existence of this task force reflects the reality that oversight of curriculum implementation is critical and needed. Oversight of curriculum implementation is critical to ensure that all students, all students, are seen, respected, and valued. Representation is crucial for youth who may feel that they are all alone. We hope this effort provides school boards and communities with the resources and the transparency that they want and deserve. And I hope that this process will also focus on the oversight of the school districts that have been captured by those who use race, immigration status, LGBTQ plus status, and more to stoke hate and fear and achieve unrelated political goals. The state must play a role in overseeing these districts and protecting these kids and families and even teachers in these districts. By working together and providing critical support for our students, educators, administrators, and school boards, we can make a significant difference in the lives of future generations. Let us co continue this effort to create an inclusive educational environment where every, every student feels valued, accepted, and empowered to succeed. Thank you, Superintendent, for bringing us all together. Very grateful for what you're doing. Thank you, Assemblymember Zabur. Um, uh, we are honored that we have the Chair of Assembly Education Committee here, uh, who is a champion of all things education, funding for our students, uh, uh, looking at school facilities, and of course, um, ensuring that there is a diverse representation of our students. Please welcome. Uh, from the 66th District uh, Chair of Education Assembly Member Almir Suchi. 
Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Superintendent, and good morning, everyone. I am so proud to uh, join this task force. Thank you to the superintendent for your leadership on this very critical issue. And I'm proud to stand with this task force, which represents the diversity, the beautiful diversity that is the state of California. As the chair of the Assembly Education Committee, I know how critical it is that our uh, instructional materials reflect that beautiful diversity that is the state of California. And so I uh, look forward to working with this task force to ensure that uh, you know, all of our textbooks, all of our curricular materials used in our classrooms do teach the histories of our diverse Californians. Just personally for me as a Japanese American, I know that uh, I always look to see if textbooks accurately reflect the lessons of the World War II Japanese American internment, not only to make sure that the history of diverse Californians are re reflected in our textbooks, but to ensure that we are learning from these important lessons from the past in order to become a better people, a better state, a better country. And so, again, thank you for uh, inviting me to join this task force. Look forward to working. Thank you. Thank you, Chair Hirsuchi. And uh, we're excited to hear uh, from District 18, the mighty District 18, Assembly Member Mia Bonta, who has been a champion on so many issues, whether it be literacy, early education, um, equitable funding for students of all backgrounds, including students of color and low-income students, and, of course, a champion for ensuring uh, the diverse representation um, in our books for our students. Please welcome Assembly Member Mia Bonta. Thank you. Thank you so much, Superintendent. And I uh, really want to recognize your leadership and your steadfast leadership in making sure that California's children are taken care of in all of their beauty uh, with the creation of this task force, especially, and I'm thankful to be able to serve on it. I'm Assembly Member Mia Bonta, and I get to proudly say that I represent the people of Oakland, Alameda, and Emeryville. And it is actually my service as the board president of Alameda Unified School District uh, that really draws me to this. In Alameda, we had a slogan that said, everyone belongs here. Mm -hmm. And the intention of that was to ensure that our children knew every single day that when they came to school, their schools would be a place where all of who they are would be included in their curriculum, in the practices of the teachers and the staff in their schools, and in the policies of the school board in helping them to be in all of their beauty as Californians, in all of their diverse beauty as Californians. And I'm appalled in this moment today to see the recent actions of school boards across the country and right here, unfortunately, in the state of California to essentially ban our books that tell those stories. And more broadly, that we are messaging to our children that today is not your day to be all of who you are, to have all of your history and all of your beauty represented when you go to school. Nearly 1,500 books were banned across the country, and teachers and librarians were threatened with jail time for shelving the wrong book. Temecula School Board recently blocked a history book textbook because it supported materials that mentioned civil rights leader Harvey Milk. Since my time in the legislature, I have worked on legislation to support books and to increase literacy. I was a librarian, put myself through college as a, as a working librarian, and these actions around uh, impeding our ability for our children to be literate, to be civically literate, uh, hurts my heart more than anything else. And yesterday, I put forward legislation to address partially this issue. Uh, AB 1352 would expressly prohibit school boards from taking any action that contradicts any existing law requiring a school to, a district to have inclusive policies, practices, and curriculum. I think it works very well in hand with the legislation that Assemblymember Jackson is putting forward because this is about the entirety of our system. This is about addressing systemic bias at its whole. I'm thankful that this task force will lead us in that direction. I have the tool of legislation uh, to be able to move that forward and I'm looking forward to working with this task force and the superintendent in so doing. Thank you. Thank you, Assembly Member Bonta, um, uh, for your legislation, and Assembly Member Jackson for your legislation. Thank you to all my colleagues for your comments. Um, 
we would be happy to take any questions that you have for any members of the task force. Uh, they all spoke so well, didn't they? And we want to encourage them to share those same remarks in our hearing, just a few <laughs> um, paces away from where we stand. But um, if there are any questions from the media, we'd be happy to take them at this time. Yeah, I invite any of the members to, to share their thoughts, but this goes beyond what might be in a standard. This has to do with what young people see when they see a book or they read about a story. And sadly, we still have um, in textbooks all across this country, textbooks that provide a representation uh, or stories that don't include representation and that aren't accurate. Um, I appreciate my colleague, Assemblymember Ramos, who's continued to talk about the need to provide accurate history about the experience of Native Americans as an example. Uh, and so this is an opportunity for textbook publishers to make a public commitment to uh, say that what they put in their books will reflect the diversity of our kids. To simply say that what they care about, um, their bottom line, will line up with what we care about, what our kids are learning and how they see themselves, and that they'll do better as a result. And as you'll hear from one of our witnesses today, uh, the great Dr. Joe Johnson, you will hear that doing just this actually will increase the bottom line for many of these companies. So it's a win, win, win. So we're asking for a public pledge today. Um, we're supporting the legislation that you heard here today. The legislation does have uh, mandates in it for school districts. You'll hear about legislation um, that will have a fee for any company, that, I'm sorry, for any district that bans a book. And so Let's be clear, inclusive education is more than woke education, as some have called it. Inclusive education helps our students to have academic success, social success, and to be able to contribute to their communities. This task force will be taking up many issues. Just one of them is what occurs uh, in textbooks. I mean, there is no doubt that this is a state with local control is a practice and a priority. Uh, but as you've heard from my colleagues, there are at least two bills that uh, aim to make, uh, to curtail the actions of those um, who are hiding uh, racism and hate under the guise of local control. Mm -hmm. Local control doesn't give you the right to um, inflict pain on someone or to even threaten someone. Our students who have been asking for the right to not be bullied because they're LGBTQ plus students, they have been bullied by adults simply for raising their voices for what they believe. And so um, there will be legislation, there is legislation that will address the actions of these school boards and we will continue to address them. Uh, as you all know, uh, many of these districts are under full investigation, uh, some of them directly by my office and we will continue to make sure that there's no discrimination taking place uh, in our schools. Uh, yes, I'm going to let the authors uh, mention their bills and their bill numbers. Uh, AB 1078, uh, which is um, a, a bill to increase the voting threshold um, of a two-thirds majority um, for local school boards um, if they wish to uh, try to ban books or curriculum. Uh, but it also increases um, and strengthens the FAIR Act um, to making sure that school districts are legally responsible um, if they begin to uh, reject uh, books and curriculum uh, simply because it tells the true representation of any protected class. Uh, AB 5 is the Safe and Supportive Schools Act. It requires that um, th there's a current uh, program that the Department of Public Instruction is doing that's creating a, a teacher and administrator and staff training program for LGBTQ plus inclusive curriculum that uh, helps students under, uh, teachers and staff understand best practices in supporting LGBTQ youth, how to comply with the Fair Education Act, a host of things and um, that, uh, that bill um, uh, is AB5 and is moving through the assembly.
uh, of the Senate now. And I have AB 1352, which seeks to ensure that school boards uh, enact the, when, when school boards violate the, uh, the laws of our land that focus on inclusive practices, curriculum, uh, and uh, systems that they uh, essentially have to do that. So it says if there's a law like the FAIR Act in place, uh, that school boards actually have to follow that, follow that law to support inclusive practices. It also ensures that uh, if there's an individual school board member that uh, refuses to put forward policy or uh, controverts the policies of a, of a state, uh, that they be censured or and allows for two thirds uh, by a two thirds vote removal of that school board member. Thank you, colleagues. Great duels. Uh, any uh, other members uh, from the media with questions? Yes. Hi. Uh, it's a newly created task force uh, ad hoc. Uh, it is the first time that it will be meeting. Um, but there have been conversations as the task force has been coming together with various interest groups and interest holders, including um, AXA, our school administrators, and our school boards associations, California Teachers Association, California Federation of Teachers. We've been having conversations about how to address inclusion in education. Uh, this is the first meeting of the task force today. There will be other meetings um, we've decided to start with the issue of uh, diversity in textbooks because it's been an issue that's been long coming. People have been asking for it for a long time. Um, you're going to hear from some great witnesses, uh, too, who are in the room already. Um, that, and if you, can, if you wish to ask them questions, you can. You're going to hear from them why this is so important. This is not a new idea. This is not a reactionary response. This is something that we've been calling for in the country in California has been leading, but there's more that can be done, and uh, so we're beginning with the task force uh, uh, with this issue. And does this task force include Republicans? Um, not that I'm aware of, at least not to date, but we welcome the participation of uh, members from any party. This isn't a partisan issue, and I can tell you that because when you look at the surveys uh, about what Americans think about the issue of banning books, uh, most Americans are opposed to the idea of banning books, both Democrats and Republicans. Um, the reality is that uh, we're seeing the actions of what I would call a where we're few who are tearing apart at the fabric of what makes this country so great, the diversity of our people. And this is one of many actions that I think we can put forward to show that California is a special nation uh, because of the diversity of our people and, and that we can hold many things at the same time. We can hold that slavery was devastating and is a devastating part of our history. But at the same time, we can be proud to be Californians and proud to be Americans and to say that we can do better than what might have happened at the beginning of the history of this country and that we can do better and that we're teaching our kids to do better. So there'll be many, many topics and, and individuals from any party are welcome. We have time for one or two more questions. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I welcome if any of uh, my colleagues want to speak to this or any of the questions that have come up. I would just say I, I applaud the governor for putting the pressure on, on companies to say, if you're going to strip out the history uh, of people in another state, you shouldn't expect to do business in the state of California. Mm -hmm. um, you know, everything has to be above board. And that, again, I, I, I can't say enough about those textbook publishers who come forward today um, to provide their pledge of support during this time. You'll hear from them in the, in the uh, hearing. And, um, uh, and so I'm grateful that there's pressure on companies to say, don't think you can make a buck doing bad things in another state and expect to be able to do business in the state of California. Um, I, I'm grateful that we have folks here who um, care about what's in our, in our textbooks. And as you heard from Assemblymember Ramos and Senator Limon, this is not new. Uh, these are items that we have been working on uh, for a long time. And um, California is going to show the way. Uh, for those other states. Uh, any, any, anyone want to address any of those? Some members of Burr? I remember when the Fair Education Act was adopted, there was a process there where every textbook manufacturer uh, or publisher had to 
provide textbooks to the Department of Public Instruction, and there was a whole review process that occurred where I know my organization with some other LGBT organizations reviewed literally every textbook from every publisher and actually ranked them. And um, I think because some of the um, uh, some of the, uh, the the recent textbooks, uh, it costs a lot of money to do that. I think we don't have that oversight yet. And what I'm hoping happens as part of this task force is that we actually can figure out how to make sure that there's oversight of the textbooks that are coming into the state of California to make sure that they actually reflect California values. And ultimately that takes resources and I'm hoping this task force will elevate that uh, here in the state of California to make sure that we've got the resources we need to provide that oversight for textbooks. I think even more importantly, I think it's just important to send a message uh, that if we can't get commitments from publishers, um, I can almost guarantee you uh, that there will be a bill uh, to ensure that California doesn't spend a dime uh, when it comes to uh, purchasing uh, those textbooks. Um, I, couldn't, I, I never fathomed uh, that a publisher would even consider um, rewriting history. I didn't even think it was allowed, right? And so it blew my mind to, to see that uh, because of political pressure, right, and that this goes to the whole uh, recent history about uh, what is truth, right? Uh, what, what is our true history? Um, and uh, we see the direct ramifications of that. Mm -hmm. um, and so we have to take this very, very, very seriously um, in making sure that we hold uh, publishers accountable uh, because they hold the key to what future generations and how their society is going to be run as well. You got um, examples from four companies today. They're here to um, give their uh, public pledge to it. And so that gives me hope and optimism just by that example. Don't take it from me. Take it from their words th from themselves that you'll hear from them directly. They'll talk about what they're already doing and what they hope to do going forward. Okay, We're going to... Um, would someone see if Assembly Member Bonta has one more minute just for a quick photo? I would like to invite up two of our witnesses who are here um, in a moment just to be able to uh, say a few words before the hearing. Um, uh, but I'm grateful for uh, my colleagues. You know, it's always busy in the legislature, and members are going to be running back and forth in between hearings. And while they're all present, I'd love to take a quick photo with all the members while we're together um, and uh, Assembly Member Bonta. Uh, but in a moment, I want to introduce you uh, allow you to hear directly uh, from Dr. Karen Korematsu, who heads the uh, Korematsu, Fred Korematsu Institute, who's been, a, she's an ambassador to California education. Uh, she has uh, helped us to steer ethnic studies for Californians. And then I want you to hear from Dr. Joe Johnson, who um, has been helping us to steer this conversation about how it's good for students, how it's good for the companies. Um, his research is, uh, is cutting edge and I want you to have a chance to hear from them. We'll take one quick, quick photo, and then you'll hear from uh, a few remarks from two of our witnesses who are here. Um, Senator, if you could. Dr. Korematsu, Dr. Johnson, please, if you wish to have a few remarks, we welcome you at this time. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Superintendent Thurman, um, and also for creating this, this task force. Um, uh, as I'm going to say in, in, at the hearing, I've been waiting for 70 years for something like this to happen because when I was growing up, I never saw myself in textbooks. And, uh, and now that we have such a, a diverse population, especially ethnicity in California, it's important for all students to recognize and see themselves as part of the history of California. So um, thank you again for holding this and I am optimistic because actually for textbook companies, it's about business. And if they want a good bottom line, then they will participate. 
but it's also a social justice opportunity for them to really uphold our society and our students who are the next generation of textbook buyers. Thank you. Dr. Johnson? I also would like to thank the State Superintendent and all of the committee members for their commitment to this issue. It hurts to think that in our nation that uh, people who call themselves educators don't recognize that we have the opportunity through education to create the beloved society where every individual is valued and appreciated and respected. And that we as educators have a sacred responsibility to build that beloved responsibility through what we teach each and every child. But also, it's important to acknowledge that our ability to teach children the rigorous academic standards that they're going to need to learn in order to succeed in this world is enhanced when we help them see how those standards connect to their lives. Right. And, and so it is so important that in the state of California, we're having this conversation so that we can make sure that our children benefit from resources that magnify their opportunity to succeed in life. So thank you. Okay, well, thank you again, Dr. Johnson, Dr. Korematsu. Uh, this concludes the press event. We invite uh, the media to stay with us for the hearing. Um, we will be just a few doors away. What's our room number for the hearing? 126. 126. We invite you to join us. Um, as you can see, we have passion leaders here. We're grateful that you're here carrying the message um, to the public about what we're doing here in the state of California. Thank you very much. Thank you.